Dear friends, welcome to In the Kitchen with Alice. Today we have such a variety of fruits and vegetables to show you because these are the ones that are familiar to us in America. If I had three counters or ten counters, perhaps I could fit the foods from other countries. Now some of these foods can be grown in other countries and some of them are even central to the diets in other continents. So let me begin by showing you that these grains and the beans and the legumes are really central to every culture on every continent in the world. And actually whole cultures grew up around the growing of the grain. And the beans and the legumes are giving sustenance beyond what the grains were, which were central to the diet. So here we have millet and we have quinoa and pearled barley and brown rice and then legumes and beans, uh, northern beans and lentils. Here we have some aduki beans and so those are our grains and beans that I've showed you. But really there are about 10 different grains, 12 different grains, and there are many, many beans. Beans are very, very good for our kidneys and the grains are central to giving us strength and sustenance. From the grains and the starchy beans, we get a good portion of our carbohydrates. So as central to the culture's diet, this was really giving them their primary sustenance. And then around the grains, the beans, the legumes, they had all the vegetables. So we have our root vegetables here. We have some onions, and uh, beets, some very interesting root vegetables, and many other cultures use a lot of very pungent, lovely root vegetables. This is a burdock root, very strengthening. All the root vegetables are growing down into the earth and they have a power to them, a strength to them. And when we take them in, they can be used medicinally to strengthen people who have a weakness from illness or even low immune. And this is ginger root. But really there are many, many roots, turmeric root, burdock, daikon, all the root vegetables are very, very strengthening. And of course we have our carrots. Again, the carrot goes down into the earth and its greenery is here. I would have loved to have stopped by the local farm yesterday to pick up some beautiful root vegetables that still have their greenery on them. But here we can show their colors. The beet is a very beautiful color. And here, yeah, let's see if we can lift this up to show you. The beet grows down like this and it has a full greenery, just like our greeneries here. Here's a little bit of its leaf and it grows down into the earth like so. So when we eat our earthy root vegetables, we gain a lot of strength. And especially when you do medicinal diets for people and you're wanting to give them one kind of strength or another, you can really use the root vegetables medicinally. Okay, and here are some of our vegetables. Um, this is actually technically a fruit. Um, cucumbers, tomatoes, peppers, all those things are a fleshy substance around the seeds. So really in the categories of fruits, it's a fruit. But we usually in, in um, this country, we slice it over a salad or cucumber. And our vegetables over here um, are squashes, our winter squash um, vegetables are very, very helpful. All the round vegetables are very helpful for the center part of the body where all of our organs are. They somewhat match our organs by being round and it's indicative of what they can do for us. So all of the round vegetables are very, very helpful. And then here we have our greens. Here we have salad, lettuces, romaine and iceberg, a beautiful, beautiful um, chard, which shows the lovely color of the green and leafy vegetables. Here we have some beautiful kale and here's our corn. And the beautiful onions still have the root with them. In medicinal cooking and preparation of food, we use often uh, the root vegetable as well, the part of the onion that most people cut off. And you just want to mince it. And you can spread it through a salad or put it in a soup. And then we really use the entire plant. The entire plant has something to give in this case. 
Many plants have just parts that are usable and parts that are inedible. So you really want to know your whole plant. Uh, the beautiful greens from carrot tops, uh, beets, even the green that comes out of the onion, especially if you leave it too long in your refrigerator, it'll start to sprout and grow green. You can use all those greens in salads, soups, any kind of preparation with grains. You cook your grains and you chop up all of these lovely root vegetables and um, the greenery. You can even cook a grain and then make a lovely salad with it the next day. Have it prepared cold and add some beautiful parsley. I wanted to show you these plants here because really in our next few weeks we're going to be showing some preparation of kitchen gardens. And so I wanted to show you that here we have um, mint, which is really lovely if you squeeze any of the herbs between your fingers and smell them or have them in your kitchen. It gives an aroma to the whole kitchen. So here we have parsley and mint. Mint is for teas. And really there's a whole category of plants that are called herbs or even the um, medicinal flowers. And if you saw fields of them growing like chamomile, you would not believe the sight of these flowers. They are drawing us to them to say, I have something to offer you. For so many people who have trouble sleeping, a lot of these um, teas are very calming. There are e there's even a tea from Japan called kukicha tea. And kukicha is actually a dried twig. And you seep it in water a long time, cook it up a bit, and it makes a very, very um, soothing tea. Um, very healthful. In fact, it's strengthening. It's used sometimes in a medicinal drink as the basis for one. And it is also um, has just a little bit of caffeine. So sometimes in the evening, if you have to make a drive, a good cup of kukicha tea is wonderful. So I bring the herbs into the picture because these wonderful plants have so much to offer that's healing to us. And the wonderful herbs that we use in our food preparation. So for example, parsley and basil and anything you want to add to a salad. But really I wanted to draw in the attention to using them in your grains. They make a wonderful addition. The bitterness of the greens is really, really, really very helpful for the liver. And it's really cleansing for the blood. So very important to have your greens in your diet. Let's see here. And here I've shown an array of fruit. The truth of the matter is that if I showed you the amount of fruits that can grow in Florida, it would be like 150 or 200 fruits. I've been in a place where a man and a woman were growing fruit trees and nut trees for a couple of decades. And their entire two acres was simply filled with fruit and nut trees. And the Florida fruits on some of those fruit trees I'd never seen before. Huge, luscious, beautiful things that I, will, I would love to give a presentation just based on the Florida fruits. But here you see what we know mostly in America. Pineapple, and here's our papaya, which by the way, when it's very ripe and soft, you can press in and see that it's not hard. And if you take a spoon and scoop out your inside, you could use that actually, the seeds are edible. But if you wanted to just scoop out the inside and put that into a blender, with a banana and some water, delicious drink. All of these fruits are showing us the vibrance that they have to offer. Here we have grains that give us carbohydrates. The fruits are immediate carbohydrate. And very different from the story we hear in this culture where you want to avoid supposedly high, fr high sugar fruits. I say eat as many as you can. Actually, these are the things that will turn diabetes around. Um, I found with hundreds of people following a diet that's basically a plant-based diet, primarily vegan, that when they eat a lot of the fruit all day long, they have the vibrance and the vitality that you see in these colors. This is the excitement of life. And if you eat this food, in fact, it will give you that vitality. So let me show you a little bit more of our fruits. Here we have our apples, both green and red, and also the variety of apples is, is amazing. Um, here's a pear and grapefruit. Grapefruit grows here in Florida. I think I'll just reach across here and slice open our beautiful ruby red grapefruit, which is an amazing color. See here how everything that you open in Florida has a surprise for you. 
<laughs> so let's see here what this one looks like. This is our mango. Okay. See how the colors are inviting us to the food. And then here we have um, a delicious spread of um, dried fruit. The truth is you can dry every fruit. You can dry the mango. Let me put this down. This mango is delicious dried. Let me put that there. And um, what else is dried? Apples can be dried. Uh, papaya is delicious dried. Um, if you go to the health food stores, you can find beautiful array of dried fruit. And it's really like the candy because the sugars in the fruit become so crystalline and delicious. So it's a way to get a real sweet uh, tooth going. So here is the ruby red, beautiful grapefruit. And these are figs, our beautiful figs. And if we cut the fig open, which I can do right here, if you look closely, you can see all these beautiful seeds inside the fig. It's really an amazing plant, um, fruit, I should say. And here are raisins, perfect. Strawberries, of course, and watermelon. Watermelon is one of the best things one can have uh, in the summer and in the spring in Florida. Uh, spring is like summer. <laughs> Here's a beautiful uh, cantaloupe. And uh, lemons, wonderful. Um, lemons can be used often in a, a salad that you make with the grains. Uh, the next day you want to cut open your lemon and you know squeeze it over you know a salad that you make you know with your rice and you can add in some beautiful seaweed. Now this seaweed I've soaked it underneath and here you can see it wet. Beautiful seaweed. And you can put, mix the grain that's been cooked um, or even sprouted. Many people who are raw foodists, they take the grain and they soak it overnight and then they let it sprout. And especially in Florida, we keep our sprouting in the refrigerator. It's so warm in the house. But you can add in um, seaweeds and condiments and herbs to your salads and a lemon or lime over it is very, very delicious to make a rice salad or millet salad. You can mix your grains as well. And here we have the avocado, which is one of the most phenomenal forms of fat that you can find in nature. Extraordinarily good in a smoothie because it makes it smooth and, and delicious. This um, avocado has so much in it, we'll devote an entire In the Kitchen with Alice session to avocados. And then we have nuts and seeds. These are our beautiful pumpkin seeds full of zinc. Very, very good for especially men, but delicious to put again in a, a, a grain salad or in a regular salad of greens and vegetables. And really, if I had a whole counter, I could fill it with all the nuts and seeds. With nuts and seeds, we're, we really have a potency of protein and fat in the, in the nut and seed. It's a concentration of the plant. So you really want to eat nuts and seeds according to how long it would take you to take off the shell and eat them. Here we have just an overflowing of seed, <laughs> but the truth is if we had to open every pumpkin seed ourselves, we would probably eat more of the portion that we really need. So thank you so much for coming out. These are the foods that heal, and I will actually be giving uh, ongoing conversation about each one of these food groups and more variety in each one of them as we go on in the next few weeks of summer, uh, spring and summer here in Florida. I thank you for coming out and I want to tell you that I have an ebook coming out in which I will be going through a lot of these sessions that we do live uh, in a workbook that allows you to take the substances that I'm discussing here and prepare beautiful things for yourselves very quickly, very simply in the kitchen, and um, start to see how these foods turn your life around. And we have an ongoing enrollment for our 12-week workshop, which is what the ebook will be defining in a book form. And you can download that to your Kindle or iPad or iPhone, or just order a copy in the mail. So thank you for coming out and bless you and hope you enjoy all of the fruits that nature has to offer.